Welcome back. All right, so in the last lesson, we started talking about collections. And by the way, don't worry that we're focusing on a person or people. I'm just using that as a basis to show you some of these basic concepts. And then I promise we'll dig into real-world projects. We'll do lots of fun stuff. But to begin, I really need you to understand the basic ideas between models and views and collections. And if you're still not seeing it yet, just wait until we get into how easy it is with Backbone to deal with events and Backbone pub sub model, and I think you'll really fall in love with it at that point. All right, so back to collection views. If we remember in the previous lesson, the problem we had, and this is a very common pattern in Backbone, but the problem is that we have a collection of people, a collection of smaller views. So we have the necessary functionality to render a single person. That's not an issue. We have a list item. We have our render method. That works fine. But we don't have the view that's responsible for rendering all of these little person views. And that's what a collection view is, the collection view pattern. So let's try this out. Let's create a new one. We're gonna use global variables just a little bit longer and then we're gonna switch over to namespacing and discuss why that's preferred to what we're doing right now. View for all people. So we'll say var people view equals backbone dot view dot extent. So now let's think, what should the tag name be for this wrapping people view? Well, if we know that each person should be in a list item, then its container, the people view, that tag name should be, as you would expect, an unordered list. So now we have this.l would be the ul node, and this dot dollar sign l will be that element wrapped within jQuery. Next, let's take care of our render method. What would this be responsible for? Well, as I can see it, we need to filter through all items in a collection. And for each one, we need to create a new view. For each, create a new person view. And then finally, we need to render that person view and then append its root element to the people collections root element. So hopefully that makes sense. For each one, we're gonna create a new list item that contains the person's name. So now we have list item, John Doe, close list item. We're then going to take that and append it to our people view tag. So we're gonna append the list item to the unordered list. And we're gonna do this many times for as many items as we have in our collection. So ultimately we'll have three list items within our unordered list. Let's add that final bit, append to root element. All right, so let's get started with the first one. Filter through all items in a collection. So immediately I can see that within people view, I need to have access to a collection. So let's do that right now. At the bottom, the only thing we've done is we've created our collection. Now we're going to say var people view equals a new instance of the people view view. And within it, we're going to pass in our collection, which is people collection. So what this will do is Backbone will immediately make collection available to us on the object. So for example, if I were to say initialize function and I console.log this.collection, let's see what happens when we view this in the browser. Now we can see within the console, yep, we do have access to the collection through this.collection, good. So now we can say, how do we filter through a collection? Well, we know that we have access to underscore. We can do underscore dot each. We also have the alias underscore dot for each. There's tons of stuff with underscore. But what's really cool is that underscore is more or less baked into Backbone. We have access to these methods. So watch what happens if I console.log this.collection once again. I'm gonna reload the page and we're gonna say people view dot render to trigger that method. And now I want you to note if we go into the proto, and we scroll down, now you can see we do have access to each. So that means I can console.log this.collection.each, and when we render it, we do have a method that we can run. So that means a lot of people, when they first come to Backbone, will do underscore.each, this.collection, and then they would do their function, right? Or they might do jQuery.each. But it's much easier just to leverage underscore being available directly through Backbone. So that means we can do this.collection.each function model. Or if it's easier, sometimes be more specific. So for each item in the collection, it will pass the model, but you might want to say person because that's more readable. Now if I console.log person, 
and I reload the page, we render it, now you can see for each case, we do have access to that model. All right, good, so now we've taken care of the very first item on our task list. Let's see the next one. For each one, create a new person view. So let's do that now. Well, we know we need to create a new person view, and we're going to assign that to a variable, so I'll call it person view equals a new person view. Now let's see if this person view requires anything. Well, it looks like we are leveraging the model. Now we don't have to do this, we could just use the view for our template, but I don't wanna get into that just yet. Let's pass in the model. So we'll say the model that person view is going to be working with is person. So now let's console.log once again, so we can see each step of the way how we're doing. I'm gonna reload the page, we render it, and now we have our new view, we have our element, and let's do this. We'll do personView.l, we render it, and now we do have each of these list items. So that's the basic idea of a collection view. It's a view that's responsible for a collection of items or smaller views. So now we've taken care of the second assignment. The final one is append to the root element. Well, let's first take a look at something that might confuse you. If I console.log this, let's see what we're gonna get. We render it and we get window, yikes. Well, let's take it out and just put it within the render method. Now what do we get? All right, so when the render method begins, this is going to refer to the view instance. But as soon as we have this anonymous function, if you're familiar with JavaScript at all, this is now going to refer to the global window object. And that's really helpful for nobody. But luckily with underscore, we can pass as a second parameter, the context. So let me backtrack a few ways. Before this referred to the window, now I'm going to specify that the context within this anonymous function should still be the view object. So I'm gonna pass in this. Now if I run it again, you'll see that this once again refers to the view. So now I can just say this.l.append personView.l. I'm gonna reload it, we render it, and now let's say peopleView.l and now we have an unordered list that contains three list items with all of our data. Now, while we're here, there's a small change we could make if we want. It really just sort of comes down to the project, but notice how when we have person view, we are initializing it and we're immediately rendering it. You may wanna get rid of that entirely. It'll shorten up your view a little bit, and then from your collection view, you could say var person equals new person view, this.l.append person view, then we're going to render it, and then we wanna gain access to L. So how can we do that? Well, let's take a first stab at it. We could just say person view dot render like that, and let's see if that works. Render, people view dot L, and yep, we're still getting the exact same thing. But we can actually group these together. If I come back down to person view, when we render it, all we're doing within this method is just setting the HTML. But to continue chaining, let's make sure that we return this from the render method. And as a general rule of thumb, as a best practice, always return this from your render methods. And that way, you can always rest assured that you can continue chaining. And what that means is then you can come back and get rid of this line and say person view dot render, and then the render method will return that view instance, and then you can call the element to get its contents. Let's try it one more time. PeopleView.render, PeopleView.l, and now we've gotten rid of some code, and now we still have that content. So then at this point, I can get rid of our third task, and we are finished with our people collection view. So then at this point, you could just say var people view equals a new people view. Then we're going to say, just for now, document.body.append PeopleView.render.l. Now remember though, if I come back, I'm not following my own advice. We're getting cannot read property L of undefined. And that's because we did not follow, as I noted, our own advice. We always wanna make sure from our render method that we return this. Now if I come back and reload, we've done it. So we use the collection view to filter through all of the items within a collection that we passed in. And for each item within that collection, we created a new person view, which has its own template and even its own event listeners. That can be really powerful. 
So right now, this still may feel like, okay, we're doing a lot of work just to get an unordered list on the page. And this is something that comes up a lot. Well, the first thing is your projects are not going to be adding unordered lists to the page, but this is setting the structure for how you can organize your code. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, once we move on to working with events and binding custom event listeners, I think you're really going to get excited at how responsive your application can be. Because we're going to get to the point where we can say, as soon as this model is updated, so maybe Jeffrey Way then becomes John Way, well, we can say as soon as that model changes, we instantly want to update the view for that model. And that way we can have this effect where we can say our model.set name equals John Doe. And as soon as we update that model, the view is listening for that change and it instantly updates the DOM. So stay tuned for that. Lots of fun stuff coming ahead. In the next lesson, we're going to clean things up. So we will begin by talking about how we can have a little helper function for dealing with templates. And then after that, we're going to start looking at namespacing so that we can get away from all of these global variables. I'll see you then.